Hi, and here we are in week 10. We're now going to look at the divorce experience. And this particular chapter can be a little difficult because we don't expect that when we get married that we're going to get a divorce. And unfortunately, statistically, a lot of families do break up and over time. And so divorce is becoming a more common experience that more couples and their children will experience. So we're going to look at this a little bit from a sociological perspective. And what we're going to start with um, in the first video is that we're going to look at a little bit about the history of divorce in Canada. It hasn't always been a part of the Canadian family experience and how we experience the divorce has shifted and changed over some time. And then we'll look a little bit about some of the causes. And I only say well, we're going to look a little bit is that we all probably know lots of different people who have experienced a divorce and we can probably say why they divorced and there's a lot of variations. So we're only going to look at some of the more fundamental ones, the ones that statistically if they were to categorize the kind of groupings of causes for divorce, what would they be? And then in the second video, we'll look at some of the developmental stages of what are the stages of going through a divorce. We'll look at some crises, in particular three crises of divorce. And we'll look at what might be the effect on children about having been involved in a divorce. Now again, excuse me, some of this will be stuff that you'll be familiar with and some of this uh, won't sound like what your experiences uh, have been. So just bear in mind and use your sociological imagination where really what you're looking at is families in general, not families that you know and not families that you've been a part of, but also the bigger picture of families. And some of these experiences are certainly personal issues and some of them are more public issues. And so even though you don't have a familiarity with this in your own experience, there are a lot of families in Canada and so many, many others may have had these experiences and that's why it seems unfamiliar. Okay, and then the last thing we'll look at will be um, some issues around custody and how does that get, re uh, what, what are the issues of custody as it relates to divorces and we'll just touch on briefly about where the future of divorce might be going. All right, so I hope this has been helpful and uh, let's get started. Okay, when we think in terms of, you know, what is a divorce, a divorce is a legal disillusionment of a marriage. So it's not just that you've walked away from one another and that's not a divorce, but you've gone through and done it in a legal manner. And that means that there will be a document that declares that you have had a divorce. This is not a, leg this is not a religious one. Um, those of you who are part of either different religious groups like Catholicism, they have a different approach in which they will also augment the experience so that you can get remarried in a church. So this is a legal disillusionment of a marriage. Divorce is the most common deviation from the traditional family life cycle. So if you thought death in a family member of one of the two mom or the dad was the most common reason that families have a change in their life cycle, it's actually divorce is the most common. Divorce families add two or three phases to their life cycle. Now, when you think in terms of phases, this is almost like stages or parts of a life cycle. If you go through childhood, you know, teen, adulthood, you get married, you, or you have a job, you get married, you have an education. I mean, these stages, these phases, well, divorce adds to the few phases. It could add the phase of separation. It could perhaps add the stage of remarriage. Um, it adds another stage of stabilization of the new family pattern. And perhaps, and in some families, that could add additional stages of separation, uh, perhaps remarriage and restabilization. So divorce adds more parts in many people's lives, more phases. Uh, divorce is not uniform. That is to say, it shouldn't be oversimplified as saying that all divorces are kind of alike, that they're not. There are amicable divorces. There are argumentative and disputive divorces. And so there's a wide range. There is not a uniform way. Not everyone gets the sort of cookie cutter approach to a divorce. Some divorces happen very quickly and some take time. Some involve children, some do not. And so it's, it's a quite a, it's not a uniform process. It's not something that should be oversimplified in practice. The divorce experience is quite diverse for couples and their families. Some history of divorce. Divorce has not always been very common. 
Uh, in early Canada, laws for divorce were strict and divorce was very infrequent. Church was dominating the social life and for the most part forbade uh, divorce. Now that altered over time in 1867. So this is that Confederation of Canada. The federal government had the exclusive authority over divorce. So if you wanted a divorce, maybe I should be more clear. If a man wanted a divorce, he had to go to the uh, federal government. Now I emphasize that in that back in 1867, women didn't have a lot of rights, so they couldn't file for divorce. Uh, they didn't have the legal authority. They weren't even deemed by law a human being. So if a man wanted a divorce, he needed to go through the federal government. So you can imagine, not everybody did that. They would just get up on their horse and ride away. You know, so divorce was quite a different experience back in 1867. Um, if there was a, a divorce that could be decreed, men needed to prove adultery by their wife. And you can imagine back in that time frame, it wouldn't have been very difficult to have done that. I mean, just saying so was sometimes evidence enough. Women needed to prove desertion of two years or longer if it was going to be considered as a divorce or extreme physical or mental cruelty. Now that's hard to prove because it's not defined. It just says extreme mental and physical cruelty. Well, everybody's different as to what they think that is for themselves. And so the law didn't have a particularly clear way of defining that. Now, come Confederation, anyone living in the province without a divorce court could submit a private member's bill to Parliament. So you, you'd sort of, you'd have to put in a request to Parliament to make a law that you could get a divorce. So if it was passed, the divorce was granted. So this would be like you get a vote from Parliament. All in favor of Steve getting a divorce, say aye. Uh, against, and if it was in favor, I could get a divorce. If it wasn't, I couldn't. And what does any of them know about my circumstances? So it was quite an archaic experience. It was long, it took a long time, and it was expensive. Not everyone would be able to afford this. Um, in 1925, women could get a divorce based on proof of adultery only. Mental and physical cruelty wasn't a part of it. Now you see in the bottom right corner the famous five uh, these were the five women who were instrumental in Canada of influencing women getting the right to vote and therefore having other legal rights after 1926, uh, 1916 and then moving on through the rest of Canada. So it was quite a, I mean, the history of divorces had a long history and it hasn't all been smooth and it hasn't all been easy and neither has it all been accepted. So what you're seeing now is a slide with crude marriages and divorce rates. Uh, this is from 1926 to 2008. On the left hand side you're seeing numbers of 200, 400, 600, 800. This is the number of divorces per 100,000 in the population. So there would be 600, 800, or 1,000 divorces, people going through divorces in 100,000 people. And along the bottom is um, the year. Now a divorce rate, this is the measure that predicts the proportion of couples that can be expected to divorce before the 30th, 30th wedding anniversary and is based on current, current patterns of divorce. So immediately after World War II, and you see that uh, represented in your slide there, you got the Great Depression, things are kind of fairly low, and then after World War II, the divorce rate jumped. And this resulted from freedom and financial independence women experienced in the workforce while men were at war. I mean, when men were at war, the factories didn't stop running, women were working. And having that greater independence, both financially and this freedom, put a strain on their relationships and families. When men came back and took over those roles, women weren't exactly uh, happy and they were missing some of that freedom and the financial independence. So some of the hasty wartime marriages um, uh, and prolonged separations occurred. A lot of people got married just before the war because, well, I didn't know if I was going to come back and I wanted to be married to my lovey. So for the next two decades, divorce rates lowered and you see those start to come down. And then in 1968 and again in 1985, uh, divorce legislation made alterations. So in 68 and then it changed 
the divorce um, conditions again in 1985. Uh, each change brought about increases in divorce. And you can see those little um, jumps there. So you are seeing crude divorce rate and um, a crude marriage rate. And you see how they um, are starting to converge. The number of marriages are coming down and the number of divorces are starting to go up. The change in divorce law in 1968 introduced the no-fault principle while maintaining fault. That is to say, adultery and cruelty were available for both men and women to um, file for divorce. In 1985, there was a reduced waiting period by granting divorces after one year of the marriage breakdown. So in 19, the difference would have been you didn't need to prove adultery or cruelty. You just needed to live apart from one another for one year and that would be a condition or a divorce could be granted. Uh, resulted in an enormous increase in the number of divorces in Canada. Now this table you see that the 30 year divorce um, rate per 100 marriages and so you think that of every 100 marriages, these are the number of marriages ending in divorce. And you're seeing quite a dis distribution here from 1998 through to, and this is all after the Divorce Act changes in 68 and 85. So you look at Ontario, you're seeing 33 marriages ended in divorce um, before that 30 year period out of every 100. Moving up to 34.6 moving up to 34.9, moving up to 35.5, moving up to 44.1 before dropping in, in 2008 to 42.1. And most of the distributions work very similarly in terms of that divorce rate. This next slide is one that looks at um, older Canadians are more likely than younger Canadians to agree with reasons for divorce. Now what you're seeing are the categories, fundamental issues, experimental issues and fertility issues that are the basic identified kinds of reasons that people divorce. Divorce Act, the Divorce Act currently recognizes three legal grounds. You can have grounds for cruelty, adultery, or being separated for one year. And in Canada, separation is the main ground because proving cruelty and adultery can be a time-consuming and an expensive process. So researchers have identified three kinds of reasons people divorce. The fundamental issues are like um, infidelity or cheating on one another and abuse. The experimental uh, issues are like disagreements, uh, sorry, experiential, um, is like um, disagreements that you might have fights and the way that you fight and the disagreements become quite significant in terms of you know your difference of opinions on pretty important issues to your relationship or unsatisfactory sex life. And then the third category, fertility issues, uh, issues like infertility and the desire to have children. Either you can't have children and the other partner wants children, or one wants them and the other doesn't want them, and there's no fertility issues. Uh, there are social factors that can increase the likely of, uh, likelihood of divorce as well. Those who marry before the age of 20 are much more likely to, be sep uh, to separate later in their marriage. Lower socioeconomic status is related to higher divorce rates. I think you remember from the journal, you know, that the uh, people who are in higher income brackets tend to marry more frequently than, uh, than people in lower income, and they're also more successful. Cohabitation before marriage increases the likelihood of divorce, and spouses whose parents are divorced are more likely to be divorced. Now, if you look at the categories there and you're seeing what you're seeing in the columns, you're seeing the categories in the left-hand column, Gen Xers, so those are um, people in the generation behind the boomers, so they'd be uh, probably 30 to 45, 50, and what you're seeing in the percentages is the range of agreement that this is reasons to divorce. The boomers, you're seeing their range of agreement, and you're seeing an increase that there's more agreement to those reasons for divorce and those elements. Older uh, Canadians, older than boomers, so they'd be into their 70s and 80s even, and you see a higher rate of agreement. And then what you're seeing in the last total is a total, if you will, a, um, an average over the, um, all three groups. What are the general consensus about 
agreement on these categories, and you're seeing a fairly high agreement. And so you will always be aware that there are other people who will have different reasons for divorcing, but these would be the main uh, sociological ones based on data that have been categorized. So they have taken all the raw experiences that they are aware of and they condense them into groups or categories and these would be the ones that are generally accepted. Um, you will know others who have had other reasons, but if you were to put them into categories, they would be captured some, uh, in one of these categories. All right, so there's the chapter um, 10, part one the divorce experience and I hope that this semester is going well for you and look forward to uh, check out the um, um, divorce experience part two in which we'll look at the stages of divorce, the three crises of divorce, how divorce affects children and some issues of custody and what might be the divorce of the future. All right, thank you very much everybody. Bye now.